My mum asked me to make her some garden obelisks last summer. Well, considering it's nearly the next spring, I'd better get them done. I'm ashamed to show you this, but this is my junk pile of bits of treated wood that I need to use up. So then they're all going to be perfect for this project. I've got a nice long bit of four by two and six by two. Now I was going to give her a call and see what height she wanted these things to be, but looking at my scrap pile, I've only got these two long bits, so I need to maximise the material I have. I've got one that's 2.4 metres long, so I'm going to roughly cut it in half at 1.2 metres. So of the material I've got, I should be able to get three bits cut to that length, and I'm going to do that on the mitre saw. I've got the three bits cut to length, but I need eight legs out of them. So I'm gonna cut them to square so I can get a bit of wood pushed against the blade and then the fence set against the wood. I've got all the uprights for it cut, but I don't quite have a plan of how it's all going to go together. So, I'm going to draw a plan, and I guess it can be a template. I've got a roll of this craft paper that I'm just going to get rolled out and taped down onto my bench. Onto this paper, I can now mark out where the centre is and draw a line down it. I want the legs to be splayed out 40 centimetres apart at the bottom, so I'm going to mark in from my centre line 20 centimetres on either side and then I think. 20 centimeters at the top of the top, 20 centimeters apart at the top, so 10 centimeters either side of my center line. I've got a straight edge put on these marks and I can get them joined up. all marked out, I can now grab two pieces, get the very bottom of it on the edge of my bench and lined up. And same with the other one. These two bits now need locking together with two cross members. And I think I'm gonna get these installed 30 centimeters up from the bottom. So I'm gonna get that marked on both pieces and to keep things simple and symmetrical, 30 centimetres down from the top. I've had a little look for my fixings and I see I've got some galvanised ring shank nails. So I'm going to use those for this. I'm just going to get a bit of wood glue that's exterior rated on. And then I can get these put in place and nailed on. Okay, that's one done, so now I just need another one to match this. 
this project involves lots of angles. Now, I was thinking how to do it, and I've got a fancy mitre saw that could cut them all, but I like to keep things as simple as possible. So I've left these bits long. Instead of actually working out what angle I need to cut them, I've just left them long, as I say, and then I can take a saw and just run it down the side and cut them uh, flush to the body. No maths, no working out of angles required. These frames can now go back onto my template, exactly the same as before. Now, if you put them the correct side of the line, that would have gone horribly wrong. Anyway, and then I'm gonna get them clamped to the end of the bench this time, just to help hold them in place now they're stood up. Now I need another bit of wood that's gonna go on 30 centimeters down, but there's no need to measure this time because I can just line it up with these bits of wood on the side. So these bits are going to be slightly longer because they're going to overlap those side bits we've already put on. So glue on and then some nails to hold them in place. Okay, one side done. So now, clamps off. Flip it round, probably won't need to clamp it now, and uh, get two more bits on. There we go. All four sides put together. Again, these bits stick out, so I'm just going to come in with the saw and trim them off. The angles on the top need sorting out now. What I've got is a bit of wood that's flat. And then I've got another piece of wood. I can rest against that and then draw a line along the top of these. Now I can take the saw trim along my line and hopefully the top of this should be square. The top is now flat so the bottom could be done as well but this is just going to get shoved into the ground so I'm just going to leave it but if you wanted you could flatten that as well. Now I need a bit to go on the top. To go on there, what I've got is some scraps of scaffold board. So I need to cut these square, and then I've got some four by two that I think I can cut square and go on top of that. I think these pieces would look nice if they had an angle on them. So I'm going to tilt the blade over, I think maybe to 35 degrees, maybe 45, and just cut the edges off. That look nicer with the angles cut on them. So these two bits will stack on top of each other and I've got a leftover curtain pole end and that will go on top. So I think I can get a screw to lock these all together 
if I drill through the center of the two blocks and then it can go for the underneath through the two blocks into the curtain pole end with some glue in between. get some glue on this let's get this screw started and get these two blocks locked together now the top needs attaching, so I'm just going to get a bit of glue on the top of these posts. Get it put in, and I'm going to drive some screws down just to lock it into place. Right, I think that's the woodworking done, and all I'm going to do here, so now it's off to the bosses to get these finished. Right, we're at my mum's, so now we can get this painted. I've got some exterior paint, which is the same colour as something else I've done. And I've got a helper. This might be tricky. This stuff dries pretty quickly, so I'm going to get a few coats of this on, and then it's all done. So that's it all done, but I don't know where it needs to go exactly because the boss is away on holiday and that's why I'm here with this vicious animal. Anyway, I'm sure she'll find a space for it when she gets back. So thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos. Come on.